it, I guess I'll tell you about those uh, after you start. I'm on mine. I'm on tweet. Back, everybody. He's about to tweet. Okay, so, uh, I have no idea how my audio is in terms of my own mic. <laughs> Hopefully it's all right. Um, I, I can guarantee, I can tell you right here and now, it doesn't sound great, but it's, uh, I can understand you and it's, it sounds good enough. Yeah, I figure. I'm using, um, headphone pods, basically. They are the ones with the best mic, but that doesn't say much. Yeah, it's, uh, I have to, for me, it's a big fuck off wireless gaming headset that does compress my head a little bit more than I would like, but it is, it's got slightly better, uh, quality than, than I'm sure the pods do. <laughs> I probably will get a label mic of some kind at some point. Okay, so what we got here is um, the ingredients for a barbecue steak that is baked, and uh, I guess I should beat the oven, and uh, cheese broccoli bake is also going to happen, but that's, I've never made that before, so it's also made really I... quickly, so yeah. I'm just going to do it I... uh, and throw it in in the last 30 minutes of the bake and the steak so that they combine, I don't know. I've made a, uh, a broccoli bake like that before, although I didn't use the eggs, but... It's just the difference of you're making a, like, cheese custard sauce with it, as opposed to just a bechamel. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Let me get my uh, recipe sheet. There's one thing I'm going to have to do later on at some point, next time we're doing anything that isn't just this. I'm going to have to turn you way back the fuck up <laughs> on, oh, yeah. uh, on Discord. Yeah. Am I, uh, off of you. am I loud? Uh, loud on my end. I'm not, I don't think necessarily that you're loud on the, the stream. Well, that might be why I sound bad. I need to change that. Yeah, if you're blowing it out, that would explain things. <laughs> oh, one second. Is it really? Wow, it's at 37%, huh? Okay, I'll turn it even further down. Damn, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it is definitely peaking, so. Uh, this mic yeah. it makes up for in quality with sheer volume. <laughs> this is furiously loud, I guess. How can that be? What is... I don't know, dog. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Well, we did... We did just go through, like, you know... 
an hour of audio problems. Yeah, that's. I mean, it is extremely louder than my regular. Actually, genuinely, mic. nearly an hour of those audio problems. Yeah, well, whatever. I, I can't do anything about the quality more than... I mean, it's at 10%, and it's still louder than my regular condenser mic, which is pretty steep. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but that's, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to start browning this meat, and I don't believe I use any oil or anything like that for this. All right, so what do you got here? Got meat. Got chopped up meat. <laughs> But uh, I'd already done that part. Uh, you are off. muted on Discord now. Am I? Really? That's weird. Yeah, I... That's actually not a huge problem. No, right, yeah, I'm hearing myself through here now. Hmm, what did I do? That's I'm hearing myself through the stream. You're muted on Discord, though. Discord sucks, man. <laughs> what? How about that? There you are. Just okay, give it a reboot. Good. I dared to change the volume level, so it broke. You know how it is. What? I, I, I'm going to be honest. You have more problems with Discord I have seen than I've ever met anyone else have problems with it. For me, yeah. it, it pretty much just works. So. That's weird. That's a new one. Yeah. Dahlia. And grab some tongs. Alright, so we got big chunks of steak. This is round steak. Yeah. I'm gonna start cooking these up. I don't think I use any oil for this. I think I just, I'm just browning it. I would recommend you use some oil, just a little bit for round, because round's a pretty uh, lean cut. It doesn't yeah. have that much in it to begin with. The sub alerts are loud. <laughs> Might need to alter settings at some point, but hey, King battle. you can deal with it. You probably should at this point. Seems like everything I change breaks it even more. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You might want to hold off. Okay. That's all of meat. That's a lot of meat. <laughs> yeah, how, much, how many pounds of meat did you use? There's three that pounds. That kind of looks like... Yeah, three pounds is a lot of meat, dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's a family recipe, and everything else is measured that way. Like, I could have cut it in half, and we'd probably be good here, but hey. We'll eat it. Eventually. Yeah, probably. It's gonna... I mean, it's a, uh, a, a braised meat recipe. It's gonna keep just fine. Yeah. Three whole meats. So, almost assuredly, the re the um, Windows is blowing out my mic. I don't know why. That's crazy. I, that's the most baffling thing to me. I'm still upset about that in in a technical way like what in the fuck is that i don't understand that everything else is fine maybe i should just talk quieter all right so so this is one of these things where um this steak is already cooked before we even start almost well, yeah, if you're braising it, it's going to just soften up at that point. So if you um, wanted to make sure that it actually did cook in like fully in the liquid as opposed to steaming it all, you'd have to make sure that it was extremely dry before you put it in the pan and did it, do it in batches. By extremely dry, I mean like leaving it in a fridge uncovered for a full day. I want to see something nice and good, that's what I do.
If you don't yeah. eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. How can you have <laughs> any pudding if you Thank don't you for the eat sub. your meat? Um, well, what I do is I brown it in this pan first, and then I put that stuff in the uh, in the big old we're using this big glass thing here. Um, once the meat's browned and yep. it's in that, then I mix all the the sauce basically in the same pan that the meat was in. So there's nothing else to do <laughs> while it browns. This is all we do. We just wait. Is what I'm trying to say. We're in wait time. Right. Yeah. You said you cook some uh, stew. Yeah, I before uh, kind of plans to do this myself kind of fell apart, unfortunately. Uh, I well, what I ended up getting was it was just my available options were getting a full round steak, which was about like eight dollars a pound because it was a really mm -hmm. good one. They didn't have any cheaper choice ones, unfortunately. But then they had round stew meat. So cut from just various leftover chunks of the round that they didn't manage to cut into a steak, because that's what sous meat is, uh, for only five dollars a pound. And I went for that one and just okay, I have some stew meat now, and my plans kind of fell to get, uh, apart a little bit here. So I just made some stew. It's just some beef stew. Nice. My beef stew isn't really a thick stew. It's more of a soup, really, with large chunks in it. I'm not too familiar with meat cooking. That's my uh, that and bread. I suck at bread real bad. <laughs> I've been trying to fix bread. A lot of people aren't good at baking bread. It's uh, it is a, you know, it's an entire job. Baking is an entire job. I made some um some donuts and that was a huge pain in the ass. But that dough worked so much better than anything else I've ever made. I don't know why I can't do it when I make bread. <laughs> bread is... I'm going to assume you don't have a stand mixer, right? I do. Do? I don't use it for bread, uh, usually. Ah, uh, is it one of the ones that, uh, does have, like, plastic ears? No, it's one of those expensive ones. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good oh, one. Oh, dang. Uh, if I, I just... if if you like my advice, it'd probably be use your stand mixer because those are really good at kneading dough and getting you a nice forgiving br uh, bread dough. All right, I watched my aunt do it. She's extremely um, like I I don't know how to describe. It. Like I'll just I'll just tell you a story. She felt bad. She went to like a church bake off thing, and everyone left all the other stalls to flood her car to buy her bread. That's how good her bread is. Uh, Damn, so, nice. So I, went, so I went to her house uh, a while back and watched her make bread and see how she does it. And it's one of those things where I learned nothing because she's too good at it. She doesn't measure at all. She doesn't do anything that you're supposed to do because she knows when it's right. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's... um problem with measuring with bread is that uh, flour... Food Unless time. you'd go by Food weight, time. flour is extremely inconsistent in how packed it is, you know? Yeah. A cup of flour can be anywhere between half a cup and a cup and a half, depending on how tightly packed in it is. So, you kind of either got to go by weight, or you just feel it out. You can just feel out the hydration and, uh... Yeah, and she what does the... that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it... If you learn, if you were to learn uh, learn it, you kind of have to touch it and get a feel for how that touch works. You gotta feel the dough with your dang hands. To her, four cups means just four half-ass scoops of flour, and then she adds more later. <laughs> so yep. it's like uh, there's no measuring at all. There's no taking a fork and mixing up the flour or any of that crap. She's done in ten seconds. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds right for somebody who's very used to it. I'm not nearly that familiar with uh with bread making myself but uh i also have an aunt who's astonishingly good at a baking thing and her pie crust always comes out perfectly every single time and i have no idea how she does that also yeah the, another thing with bread is that uh it also genuinely depends on your elevation and the relative humidity and ambient temperature of the room you're uh, <laughs> working with. So, like, you, it literally always has to be a bespoke, I just kind of learned how to do it on the fly sort of thing. 
I've tried it's so many different thing. kinds of bread. I just want some nice soft wheat. Let me let me show you the kind of bread I eat. Uh, store bread here. Just some nice soft Arnold's wheat bread. I just want some of this, and I can't make it myself. It's never this soft. It's always awful. Well, okay. Um, assumedly, that kind of bread probably doesn't just use you know, flour, water, uh, yeast, and salt. That probably uses some additional other ingredients. Yeah, I, um, I've tried If you'd honey. like a shortcut, hold up. If you'd like a <laughs> shortcut to making sure that your bread is always super soft, just go, just go to making potato bread. Genuinely, just go ahead and uh, switch <laughs> over to that. Potato bread always is super soft. No matter, even if you fuck it up. All right. Also, potato bread kicks ass, by the way. Nice. I don't. I'm not familiar with potato bread. Oh really? Uh, potato bread is. It doesn't like replace that much of the flour with potato. It's ma you use some very very highly. Uh, highly boiled up, mashed, very uh, soft potato, toss that in there as well. And it pretty much... You get a little bit of flavor out of, it, out of it, but what it mainly does is it changes the texture of the bread to be very, very soft and supple. Kind of no matter what you do to it. Okay. And it kicks ass. I love potato bread. I've tried, um... Oh, I've tried like ten different types of bread <laughs> so far. Honey, honey wheat, and uh, that kind of stuff is what I usually try and make, and it's all right. It's just not. Uh, I wouldn't buy it. Bikini bread, for what it's worth, is a quick bread. A do you? Uh, it's actually completely different from a yeasted loaf. Sourdough kicks ass, but it's also a pain in the ass to take care of a starter. Almost done with this meat. It's just a little pink still. I think my problem is I um, I overwork the bread every time. Like, it doesn't feel right, and then it's way overdone by the time I give up. One of the things you have to do whenever you're, uh, when you want to work in a lot of gluten while, uh, while not trying to overneat it, is that you have to let it rest every now and again, because that's, that's just an important part of making sure the gluten chains last and un, like, uh, basically needs to un, uh, do the, Brands and whatnot. Although at the same time, yeah, it pointed out if you're not using the stand mixer, you pretty much aren't over mixing it. There's like almost, it's almost possible that that's the case. Your hydration level might not be good for what you're trying to make too. It's just um, by making something kind of dry. Well, in that case, then I don't know what is wrong with it. <laughs> it's because I sit there for like 30 minutes kneading it, and it never becomes stretchy. It always is like, well, it's just awful. It just pulls right apart. Thanks for host. Um, this is like the fourth time I've made this. This is my mom's like secret Christmas dinner recipe, so she likes it a lot. Of course, yep. I asked her permission before I <laughs> broadcast. We have a couple others. Um, if you're interested in uh, trying a cook some other time, I mostly have desserts, but um, my family makes caramels homemade, and they whip ass. That's really hard, though. Um, that's 20 minutes of stirring, and if you screw up, it's it's toffee. It's ruined. I also have an electric stove, and I have one of those glass-top electric stoves, so I don't even have the coils. 
But I actually prefer. I prefer the. If you're going to be using a lot of stuff, I prefer the glass top ones myself. But. Yeah. Did I miss out on some Peggle discussion? Their Peggle talk? Yeah, uh, I heard there was Peggle talk and I wasn't in on it. Oh, right, you mean. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday. We are just talking about. Um, so. PC Game Pass uh, has Peggle 1 on it. Nice. And uh, I went ahead and checked in on, hey, does it got Peggle 2? And Ty said, nah, it doesn't have Peggle 2, dog. And <laughs> I was very concerned. Uh, hey, why, why it got Peggle 2, though? Peggle 2 apparently is consoles only. I don't know why. I don't know. It's three bucks right now, so I finally got to play it. It's not bad. If you're a Peggle head or whatever you want to, what a fan of Peggle. I'm not a Peggle head myself, but I did enjoy Peggle One. I just wish I could ever be as excited as uh, the guy who was who was announcing Peggle 2, you know? That was when I was, um, I could have sworn it was the PS4, but whatever system it was, I didn't have it. So I was really annoyed that I couldn't play it. I try not to drop my steak on the floor, my cats will steal it. All right, well, that's step one. <laughs> okay, so we got a lot of garbage going on now. Uh, onions first. I already chopped those uh, up. Gotta love that. I hate onions a lot, but um, when they're cooked, I don't mind them at all. Really? Uh, would you like to know how many onions are in this beef stew that I made? How many? Two and a half. Two full, like, la relatively large, more like large to medium size onions. Uh, and one very small one as well. So, honestly, three. But, you know, two and a half, honestly. Now, this is just one, and um, I won't mind it at all. That's just one. But if there were, if there's too many, I can't stand them. Tell me that there's an a proportionate amount of garlic too. There's like six garlic cloves in this as well, yeah. I didn't have any carrots. I was gonna use some carrots in the stew too, but uh, I. I forgot that I didn't have any. So it's just meat, potatoes, and onions. As far as, like, uh, quantities of vegetable in there go. You know, that famous vegetable, meat. You know you're an, a boring adult when you get excited by a brown sugar container with a terracotta disc on the top of <laughs> To keep it fresh. But this is my, uh, I just got this thing. I need some brown sugar. I've made a pie. Uh, we made I have a also made a pie. pie. I've made uh, a number of pies, actually, with homemade pie crust and everything, and I'm not good at making pie crust. Like, that's just a fact. I'm just not good at it. Takes forever. Takes forever, and... It genuinely would have come out better if I had just used a pre-made pie crust, yeah. I have to melt these onions. They have to, they have to disintegrate. That's how I like my onions. Gone. You want them like really fucked up? You want yeah. them got, like completely destroyed? 
they're my so enemy. That's gonna, they're going to be in there for a while then. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're they're going to bake, so it's not too big a deal. I, I use them in my uh, my other sauces, and I always get rid of them. Yeah, for me, I uh, the way I did the onions in the stew is that uh, for one and a half of them, or rather, the one it's one large one, one small one, I put them in at the very beginning. I get them sautéed up, and I, they basically will fully dissolve in. But I full I chop up a full size onion later on, and just toss that in there because I actually like having a little bit of onion texture, in for me to just bite into, in the the stew. Uh, so what we're doing is making barbecue sauce out of disgusting yellow mustard, a bunch of ketchup, <laughs> and Worcester sauce, uh, vinegar, and some listen, other stuff. Listen, you can't, um, yellow mustard has its place on things, okay? It, I would not want any other mustard on a hot dog. I wouldn't want sure. mustard on my dog. <laughs> oh. Ouch. I can't believe this. I didn't know I was in the position of someone who doesn't use, uh, doesn't do a, a mustard dog. I don't do mustard dogs. Dang. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I'm, I'm gone. Rest in peace. I'm dead. <laughs> Yellow mustard's also the only mustard that can go on a Cuban, on a Cuban sandwich. Which, I am just now realizing having said that, I, I just realized I haven't had a Cuban sandwich in like <laughs> five months because I moved away from the place that sold them. Fuck. Oh god. I, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to find somewhere that sells Cubanos again. They're an enormous pain in the ass to make it yourself. Is the problem though. And I also uh, will fry my burgers a lot of time in yellow mustard because I'm fond of animal style burgers. I don't know what um, I don't know what's in regular barbecue sauce. This one is not normal, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, yeah. Regular barbecue sauces are, are often brown sugar based with uh, apple cider vinegar as a part of it too. Not a cup of ketchup. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes yeah. Actually, there's a lot of ketchup uh -huh. in in those sometimes. Um, Twitch's auto mod has gotten changed because they're doing something with the brand regards. friendliness thing. Yeah. yeah, and it is it's overtuned all of a sudden. Any offense is getting fixed up, so it needs to be filtered slowly. Yeah, I I've turned it up, uh, as low down as possible. Ooh. It is like rank one on identity politics stuff, and that's it. Because anything more, and it just becomes, uh, it auto-mods everything. It's time to cook. Thanks for sub. Yeah, I think these onions are browned up. That's good for me. I'm gonna start adding other stuff in here. Um, just gonna turn the temp down a bit and start adding some stuff. Uh, the recipe is on the recipe command there, if you're wanting to see it. Brown sugar. Only a tablespoon of mustard. 
I mean, yeah, that tracks. Mustard's very powerful. You don't really need that much a lot of the time. I actually love mustard. I'll use uh, yellow mustard on basically anything. Some water. Whole lot of ketchup. And that, that ain't me yet, Wong Fo. That's that's actually just um, Smite has that apple cider vinegar. What? Someone mentioned that you've got the good apple cider vinegar. What did I ban? Folks, just thinking that you banned the word mustard intentionally. <laughs> not the case. I don't think so. I don't hate it that much. It's just not my thing. There's a couple foods I really don't like to eat. And they just unfortunately are very common. Like peanuts and mustard. Why in the world would any of you ever think that the word mustard was intentionally banned? <laughs> in what word would anyone do that? Go to hell, mustard. How dare you enjoy that yellow fluid. You know, probably why it has, uh, it's banned is because it has the, you know, letters T, A, R, and D in, it, in sequence in it, and that's yeah, probably why Automod gets rid of it. That's how powerful Automod has become. <laughs> Automod it yeah. hyper-analyzes every word. Like, I like Automod, but man, it, it needs toned. Um... Let's see here. Two tablespoons of oil. There's a large and surprising quantity of sugar in this barbecue sauce you're making here, so that oil will likely uh, work on it. No problem. All the sugar is in the ketchup, I guess? Most of it's in the ketchup, yeah. Ketchup has quite a large quantity of sugar in it. Uh, the, the three main ingredients in ketchup are sugar, vinegar, tomato paste, is what it is. There's some other stuff in it too, of course, but most of that's mostly just for uh, texture. Aren't there like 27 ingredients in Heinz ketchup? 57 and yeah. they're all sugar. <laughs> just the most, 57 most kinds of, of sugar. It, yeah, but like of those 57 ingredients, 99% of it is tomato, sugar, and vinegar, you know? <laughs> Salt and pepper, last thing. Of course, yeah. I actually cook with ketchup every now and again these days because it's it's a convenient source of tomato paste, actually, if you don't have any on hand. 
I make a lot of a tomato sauce, so I always have that at least. Disgusting paste. It's just, it never comes out. It's very, 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 very cooked down. It's very thick. It happens. It's possible I burnt banned mustard as a joke. <laughs> I don't remember that. I do a lot of stuff. I've lived a long time. I've done a lot of stuff. A lot of dumb stuff like banning mustard. Certainly possible. Okay, and half a cup of vinegar, the final thing, and this thing is just simmering for a while, and that's it. Um, I like my sauce to be thicker, so I don't use as much water as my mom does. What were you going to do to this recipe? So, I wasn't going to use two-thirds of a cup of ketchup. That is the main thing that I wasn't going to do. Yeah. Uh, I was going to replace a large amount of it with um, a mixture of tomato paste, uh, a little bit of honey, not a tremendous amount. And a little bit of extra vinegar, because I was going to make it kind of go a uh, a more vinegary sort of sauce to go with it, really. A little bit less sweet, more vinegar. Also, replace the water that was used in it with uh, chicken stock. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, and then it would end up being more uh, savory and a little bit less, uh, more savory and sour and a little bit less sweet. That is the main difference I would have done. Uh, also probably would have used Dijon mustard over yellow mustard. Dijon just plays a little bit better with uh, meats in general. If you're going to cook it into something like that, in my experience. She didn't Whereas say yellow which mustard, mustard to use. Um, this is like a doctor's note scrawled on a piece of paper from 1980 that I used to get this recipe. So. For all I know, she used that kind of mustard. That's fair. <laughs> we needed we needed some translation on. Like it's not just round steak; you can use deer as well. Like I don't, I can barely read this stuff. It's faded. What you're so if you can use deer as well, what you're looking for specifically is actually a relatively lean cut with large fibers in it. Yeah. She wants Which, it to be that's... tender and fall apart on your fork, like it really, really soft steak. Hey, Gene, thanks. Um, uh, so I'm just, I'm just cooking some, some of the water out of this, and then I'm gonna pour it on the meat, and we, um, we bake it. One thing that I didn't do the first time I made this was put aluminum foil over it, and it got charred to hell. <laughs> yeah, this is a very important step. You must foil this meat. Don't gotta be all the way though. Maybe like in the last 15 minutes, take that uh, foil off and let it char up a little. Yeah, uh, one of the things that's confusing to me about this recipe is that it says cook for two to three hours, but we've never even half of that time. It's all, it's definitely done <laughs> like at, after 90. So I don't know why she wrote two to three hours there. 90 and two hours are pretty close to each other. That's the two hours of the, uh, the wild, you know? Yeah. Two hours, give or take 50%. Cat. Cat doing cat things? Yeah, he's, he wants some steak. 
<laughs> Grabbing the second bowl of stew. Cat dares to kitchen. I do think out of all the available meats for stew, Rand actually is one of my is my favorite. Because while it's not particularly fatty, and the fibers on it are actually quite large, that's something I like about it. it comes out just right, I think, for the texture, as long as you cook it the proper appropriate amount of time. One of the best things about cats is um, if you move anything at all in the room, it, it fucks with them. They have to they have to investigate. <laughs> like they don't understand. So he had to come over here and look at the corner of the room. It's very important to cats. They don't like that when something's not like it was. All right. Cats are creatures of habit. Let's uh. Let's actually move this over here. That looks pretty good. I've never made chili before until um, this winter. It's not too hard, but uh, I'm still working on it. The only real difficulty with chili is getting exactly how you want it, basically. I heard some people don't use beans in their chili, and that's, that's offensive to me. It, that, that is two sides of a, a war that will end the earth, is what that is. That's beans no in or beans out chili is the... <laughs> that is the scub or no scub of the modern day. I can't, I can't do it. I can't imagine no kidney beans in my chili. That's all chili is. Kidney beans with sides of meat. I'm actually not very fond of red chili. Regular standard chili con carne and all that. I'm, I'm not into those. I am extremely into green chilies. Chili verde and like all of its variants. Those are my jam. I've never had them. It's the main difference is uh, using green peppers and tomatillos rather than tomatoes and other things like that. Alright, this is, um, this is properly marinated. Also, maybe with either pork or chicken most of the time, rather than beef. There it is. I'm gonna foil this thing up. That nice heavy duty foil. Hell yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Alright, so this gets baked for um, apparently two and a half hours, but more likely half of that. And at some point in the next hour, I'm going to put some uh, some cheese broccoli in there. I don't know how to make that, so I'll take my time with that part. That's new. Yeah, I mean, from my own experience of making broccoli bakes and similar things like that, it's pretty easy, all things considered. You just got to know how to build up a, a bechamel. What the? What? Sorry, I'm just looking at um, this recipe that you hear about the cheese broccoli bake. 
Cook broccoli in 10 minutes or until al dente. What? Boiling. <laughs> broccoli becomes al dente in boiling water after like three. What are they doing with this broccoli? I better get to work on that. Do they want. Do they want absolutely no texture at all on the broccoli? Broccoli is pretty damn good. I love me some broccoli. Yeah, al dente to an infant? Excuse me? I mean, the thing is that the broccoli then gets baked again, so... If you're <laughs> cooking your broccoli al dente, even if you were to do it like that... Uh... In the- in the- in the water, and then doing it again in the bake, you're gonna have just- it's just gonna be mush at that point. Enjoy this boiling water cast. That's what we're doing now. We're just we're just broadcasting the content of boiling water. Not the only not you're not the first person to do this, and that's not gonna be the last time either, I'm sure. Either of us. <laughs> there, I mean shit, I've gotta boil an entire head of cabbage at some point and get a nice close up of the pot for you to enjoy. Hell yeah. Literally what we're here to watch a some water boil. Yeah. Falling by 2025, we'll be making good time. Something that uh, I have learned from the place that I live, if the water heater is uh, set to absurdly hot. Is the funny thing there. Because it's a small tank, it doesn't actually have that much water in it to begin with. So it keeps itself it quite hot to extend the life of the hot water that we have there. This has the upside of making things take only like four minutes to boil. Because I just put it up. It, it's 150 degrees when it's at maximum temperature from the, the tap. So it only takes like, tw uh, you know, five minutes to get up to 212. It, it's so hot it, it will scald me, yes. I have a habit from the last place I lived where I just always turn the um, the water to as hot as possible when washing my hands, because I do that frequently, as everyone should be. Wash your hands, y'all. <laughs> and um, I still have that habit in me, which means I go it over to the extremely hot, and then, you know, five seconds later, oh shit, my hands are destroyed because this water's too hot. Eh, who needs nerves in your hands? It's fine. The less nerves you have, the easier it will be to wash them. Exactly. We're on the same page here. Ah, oh, look at that. 
boiling action starting. We got those tiny bubbles. Yeah. Condensation air coming out of there. Do I chop up the broccoli before or after it's boiled? Uh, after. Sorry, before. You chop it off before, for sure. Yeah, cook the broccoli florets. So they just want you to use florets for this. Yeah, no stems. I would include the stems because I'm not wasteful. <laughs> oh wow, they don't even have you temper these egg yolks. Eggs at all. Coley. It's completely up to you to follow this uh, this recipe one uh, to the letter or not. My recommendation is do not cook the broccoli as much as they want you to. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. I've cooked broccoli before. <laughs> it's just I don't remember it taking twenty minutes. Ten minutes in boiling water is that that fucks up this this kills the broccoli is what that is. You don't like broccoli? Would you would you recommend it as a substitute? If you like asparagus, most uses of uh, broccoli could be replaced with asparagus or cauliflower if you prefer cauliflower. Likes only one of those three things: broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus. I don't know. One might. I know some people. I know plenty of people who actually love broccoli but hate cauliflower. Like that's a thing. I'm not a huge fan. It doesn't taste like anything. Have you ever had Romanesco? No. It's like somewhere between broccoli and cauliflower, texture-wise. And also, it's a spiral. It's, it's sorry, not a spiral, a fractal. It's a uh, like actual fractal that exists in life, and it's red. Okay, it's we, uh, it's really tasty. We boil the water. We put the broccoli, and we cook it. We drain it. And then we do the rest. Doesn't even ask you to blanch it, huh? You don't have a bowl. Do what? Uh, to blanch, to shock the broccoli after cooking it. No. I'm gonna toss this in here. At this point, it's broccoli time. Blanch after cooking or before cooking? You would, uh, so... Blanch a food, you cook it in water, and then you shock it. The shocking it is putting it into a, uh... A bowl of very cold ice water to stop it from cooking very, very, uh, quickly. It's a way to get exactly the texture you want on broccoli to stop it from cooking anymore. And if you're a, uh... A, you know, a restaurateur who wants your broccoli to be extremely bright green... That's the way you make sure it stays green. It'll stay green like that even after you, um... Uh, what do you call it? It'll stay green like that even after you, uh... Bake it again, is the idea. 
Dark Fire Yoshi, there's no reason to reuse the water with the boiled broccoli in because it'll have almost no broccoli fla like, uh, flavor in it. There's a uh, fun note about the flavor compounds in all brassica vegetables, which is cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, and all of those. Uh, they're fat soluble. They're not water soluble. If you cook some of those in water, all of the natural flavor of the broccoli and all those actually stays in the in the vegetable. It doesn't get cooked out at all. So actually, if you roast your uh, broccoli and whatnot with uh, a fat and whatnot, you actually do leach out some of the flavor of the broccoli when you do that. You actually make it taste less like broccoli and more browning. You, you give it a browning flavor, it's my art reaction. These are the ingredients. Yep, butter, milk, eggs, and uh, flour and cheese are the only other ingredients in this, basically, yeah. When they say one and a half cups of uh, cheese, how is that measured? In my experience, what they usually mean is a packed cup, where if it's uh, after you shred it yourself or if it's pre-shredded, you pack it in kind of uh, loosely. Not super tight, but a little bit. I think I'm done cooking the broccoli. <laughs> I'll try one. You don't want to, like, just to pull it out and it's still more or less raw, or if it's overcooked, right? Personally, I, I would never... A, uh... Soy milk for a bechamel, but that's me. It is not soy milk. Um, I always use whole milk when I cook, or at least I have been. Soy milk is nice when you're in a pandemic and you gotta wait two months to go to the grocery store. <laughs> I don't like it normally. Yeah, that's fair. This bakes at almost the same temperature as the meat, so 
probably just going to be able to throw it in there at some point. There is actually a uh, an equation that you can do to check to see how much longer it will take if it's going to be uh, at a lower or higher temp. 25 degrees uh, higher than it's supposed to be. Uh, then it would probably take about 25 to 30 minutes longer than normal. Longer? Every... Every... Well, okay, so... Oh, you're saying that uh, the broccoli should be in there at a lower temperature. Yeah, I think so. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, then it would probably take about 20 minutes less. Unless it only takes... Uh, not 20 minutes less, like 15 minutes less if it's in there for 30 to 45 minutes, really, huh? Actually, the recipe says either one, so I guess I can pick. These temperatures, they're actually the same when you think about it. Three fifty is what the really meat's weird. At. Okay, Where did you are... find this recipe, by the way? How did you find it? Like, um, did you just look up broccoli cheese bake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a link in there of <laughs> where it came from. From an Italian in my kitchen. <laughs> Living in Italy, I learned to cook authentic Italian dishes using whole ingredients, fresh veggies, and delicious spices. Take a seat and have a taste. <laughs> Okay. Three and a half tablespoons of butter. That's a. For something that's making a bechamel, that's actually not that much. That's a perfectly reasonable amount. What is a bechamel? Bechamel is a basic white uh, French sauce, which is made with a... Whoa, 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 what are you doing just adding the butter to the, the broccoli? That's what it says. Is that what it says? What? Oh, you're right. I need a different pot. Yeah, they, they want you to make a bechamel with this, with the flour and the... Uh... Yeah, that's what they do. I can do that. I got pots. Yeah, so it's... You basically melt some butter and uh, in a pan, throw some flour into it, and then you have what the, is the beginning of a roux which is the butter, the, the butter and flour mix. You cook that for a bit, and then you toss in your uh, your milk, usually, at that point. And uh, you flavor it with some salt, pepper, and usually, and in my opinion, completely necessary, nutmeg. But uh, some, some don't do that, rather, for whatever reason. Thinking margarine or shortening won't work? Actually, they totally will. They'll work just fine. 
All you need is an oil. It doesn't have to be butter, exactly. It's just that uh, butter is the... It's part of the flavor of the roux. Hmm. And, uh, yes, I am 100% on board at a bowl with uh, Chef John's uh, philosophy of if, you're, if your roux is hot and your milk or whatever other thing you're using is, uh, is cold, then you're not going to have lumps pretty much no matter what you do to it. But if it's not, then, well, then you should probably add it in batches. Very technically, what you're making here is actually a Mornay sauce, which is a bechamel with cheese in it. There's no other real difference. Oh, then they toss some eggs in there, and they don't even temper them, which is weird. What's temper an egg? So, if you just toss an egg in there, it will probably immediately cook the egg. You know, where it becomes kind of... Oh, yeah. You cook the yolk and the... And the the white and all that, it gets the cooked egg texture and everything. Tempering an egg is slowly introducing uh, more liquid and heat into the egg uh, and mixing those together to prevent it from doing that. And what you end up instead is yet another uh, emulsifying agent in the form of a tempered egg. And tempered eggs actually will eventually form custard, is what it is. So they they become like a consistently even throughout the uh, they get distributed evenly throughout a liquid without immediately turning into a uh, cooked egg. Tempering egg yolks and everything is a necessary part of making custard and other things. Tempering eggs is, ne is necessary for carbonara. You can't make a uh, carbonara without tempering eggs. Making a proper gumbo root takes like a good 25 minutes, right? To an hour, a half hour of constantly stirring and getting it as dark brown as possible. Stirring's rough. <laughs> it's hard as it looks. I was talking about is, the uh, caramels earlier, that stuff. There's a lot of that. Yeah, especially with the car uh, caramel specifically. Sugar actually fights back against you as you stir it. It it There's a little bit more effort poured into it than in other things. Cat Investigation Squad. You don't have to baby a roux for what it's worth. You, you can leave it alone for every like minute or so, no problem. So long as it's not one that you're cooking for a very long time. All right. You only got to cook that until it, like, starts to, uh, literally just to make sure the flavor of flour is gone from it. Mm -hmm. If you want an easy trick to make sure you know at the right, uh, the right, yeah, like, cooking level for that. If it starts to smell like pie crust, you're good to go. Two cups of milk. Makes sense. Mm. 
That's now. Get those vigorous whiskins in. It's only slushier right now because the milk hasn't boiled again. Or rather, this hasn't boiled. It has not been brought down to a... Uh, very cool temperature because the the milk was cold and was just added in right there. The moment that it uh, boils is when it reaches its uh, final consistency, and uh, that's when it's done cooking. Next we add. There's an actual. Uh, once this boils, we add broccoli and cheese, and then the eggs. And that's all. What I would do, and obviously follow it as what you, what you want to do, however you like. What I would do is actually let it boil, and then I would I would temper the uh, eggs, and then add them in. You just fry them up. And then, uh, no, I temper them. It would be, I I would get a bowl with the two uh, eggs in there. And uh, once the, the bechamel has gotten to a boil, that doesn't mean keep it boiling, just once it's got there, turn the heat off. Take some of it, uh, take like a teaspoon of it, put it in there, mix it in, take another teaspoon of the, the, of the, um, what do you call it? Of the, the sauce, mix it again and again, and so on and so forth. Until you're confident that the eggs did not cook in there, but instead tempered in there. Then toss those in. And then once, uh, that's happened. I just toss my cheese in there, then uh, fold that in, and then the broccoli. That'd be my plan. Okay. So the step by step is crack the eggs open and put them in a bowl, and then that would be my plan. Yeah. Scoop some of this milk stuff into the to the eggs. A small bit at a time, but yeah, and make sure that it's uh, misks misk it up. Uh, you know. Mix it the whole time. You want to be uh, whiskey it the whole time. Yeah. Not the bechamel. That doesn't need to be wet, uh, whisked vig vigorously. It's the egg mixture that will be. Ah, uh, I see where the Italy stuff comes in in the uh, this recipe, by the way, of why it's an Italian in my kitchen. Uh, actually, this one doesn't have anything to do with Italy. There's just an aside in the recipe of Italians like to steam or boil the broccoli first, then saute it with some olive oil, garlic, and salt. This is a delicious way also, but nothing beats break bro uh, baked broccoli. What? <laughs> Yeah, Chabadu, I agree that uh, I bring my my bechamel up to a boil, turn off the heat, and then afterwards I add the cheese in. I don't boil the, the cheese in there at all.
This is almost done cooking. Once it takes like a bit of a royal, you're good to go. Yeah, honestly, you're good to start tempering right now. That's plenty hot. Yeah, I think I'm I'm done uh, with heat on it completely. Moving back. Um, just like a tablespoon. Just like a tablespoon, toss it in there, whisk it. Uh, then just do that until you're confident that if you pour that into this mixture, it won't uh, turn into just uh, an egg mess. Which won't take that long. It, it doesn't take that many additions to temper an egg yolk. Well, I gotta fold it's the gonna broccoli look in here. Up. Yeah. And uh, and the cheese first here. Oh no, you you don't want to fold those in for if you're gonna do the tempering. Don't you don't do it yet. You'd want to do that after finishing the tempering. Oh yeah. Here we'll get the the good camera stand. <laughs> Tempering isn't like hard. It's it's just something you you kind of just know to to do a lot of the time. Usually it's like once you've doubled the volume of the uh, egg and you're generally done. That'll probably be like a third of a cup, so like eight uh, tablespoons, I think. That's four. Yeah, you're pretty much almost done. You can also probably add it in larger. Yeah, exactly. It's fairly creamy. Yeah, it's looking good now. Okay, we. So um, what this should end. I was just gonna say we fold in the broccoli and cheese, and then we deal with that. I would just pour that in now. All right. No real downside to it. And even if you did fuck it up at this point, it would come out exactly the same as it would in the recipe. Mix it in nice, and you're probably good to go. All right. Yeah, so what this should end up doing is uh, it should thicken up your sauce without... It, it should thicken it up and keep it very creamy without having to use, like, more flour or anything like that. It would add a little bit of extra richness from the egg yolks. Right? Because egg yolks are, you know, very fatty. And um, in a way that, uh, 
even if it loses a lot of moisture, it will still stay like this level of creamy and have a good texture to it. I mean, hey, that's looking good now. It just so happens that pretty much all this cheddar is what we need. <laughs> so one bag of cheddar is exactly what they're looking for. If you would like a uh, a future bit of advice on these, uh, if you're going to be making a Mornay sauce, you should almost never use pre-shredded stuff because it doesn't fully melt down properly a lot of the time. This might actually work out just fine. These are large shreds. It probably doesn't use that much cellulose powder to prevent it from caking together. I usually buy my ingredients in, in brick form from the deli because it whips. <laughs> This is really good. Pre shredded stuff just often has, yeah, cellulose powder in it. Also known as sawdust. Not literally sawdust, but it has, uh, it is, you know, it's complex wood starches, is what you're talking about there at that point. Sounds of making Mac and Brock. Yeah. Man, we gotta bake this. It looks good to me. The way it is. If you bake it, you're gonna get a good, nice crust on it, though. And that's a mwah, perfect choice. Yeah, I can see that. I, um, I learned how to make queso. Uh... And I had to clean that container out because I made that the other day. Because I got tired of uh, not having any good nacho cheese at all. But ultimately, uh, we're going to be baking this in this, um, this red crock pot over here. There it is. Oh, uh, please. What, please? uh, do, you wouldn't happen to know what brand that is, would you? That Dutch oven? Does it have a Dutch oven, like, brand on it? Chantel. Oh, thank God. I was going to be extremely, extremely jealous if you had a cruise. <laughs> Because those are fucking like 350 bucks. Chantel ones are uh, actually perfectly fine and they're um, they're good. They're like much more affordable, more reasonable in the mounts. Like Cruze uh, Dutch ovens are absurdly expensive. Are they worth the cost? I have no idea. That was a... Uh, alright, so if you wanted to get one from the, the source itself... A uh, Lecrosa uh, round Dutch oven... ...comes anywhere between 1 to 13 and quarter quarts. Can run you for anywhere between one hundred and fifty five to five hundred and sixty dollars. Cool. <laughs> oh, they'll last more than your life. A Le Creuset, uh Dutch oven will last longer than you. It will it will last basically forever. They get they literally give you a lifetime warranty that they will be as good they'll be as good as you got them forever. Does this get covered or uncovered? Cooked. It's probably uncovered, I would assume. Oh, uh, they say baking dish. They, they don't say anything about this kind of thing at all. I'm breaking the rules. Uh, a, if you're going to be using a Dutch oven, then it will probably take a little bit longer. But uh, 
it would also probably work just fine uncovered or covered, actually. Because how Dutch ovens work is that the surface, the, the top of it, you're making a smaller second oven inside of your oven, is what it is. The Dutch oven itself will also radiate heat really, really well. All right. I'm just gonna leave it uncovered, and uh, I'll be able to look at it. <laughs> yes, because I don't know how long it's. I would be also. There. I would also do uncovered. Yeah. Uh, this ceramic. This is enameled, right? Um. I mean, it looks like it. So yeah, it it is. I can just say it is. Uh. Enamel surfaces aren't non-stick, so that will probably stick a little bit to it, just so you're aware in advance. I oiled it up. You oiled it up? Yeah. Okay, you're good. Never mind. Alright, well, we got 40 minutes until the meat is maybe done. <laughs> like, the early. You probably have about done. that long for the, the cheese as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit less. Well, it's 8 p.m. I'm going back for more stew. Nice. This is bowl number three because I don't know. I've got a problem, I guess. Cat cam. Where'd she go? She left. <laughs> I have just the perfect amount of leftover... What do you call it? Leftover fat in this stew that it's got this glossy, velvety sheen to it. But it doesn't have a layer of fat on top. Sometimes want you a bit of fat in your stew. It's it's good. It tastes good. The first time I ever made this while when camping, uh, I didn't do that. So it had this big old, just big cap of fat on it. So you kind of had to do, like personally remove it to get into the actual stew part. This is extremely my guaranteed every time I go camping, I will cook this uh, every time recipe, though. Easy, tasty, and it is the hardiest thing in the world when you're outside. Here's a meme for you. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah? I don't know what this product is. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out here, by the way. I just reached over to put my headphones on when I already had my headphones on. So for a second, I actually did have two pairs on at the same time. Good time. That's how you get 7.1 audio. What do you do when you don't have food on your plate? You just have a shitty keyboard? Well, if it's separated out like that, that's actually kind of ergonomic. People like yeah. that, you know? I, I don't like it. <laughs> For a lot of folks, they actually have their hands separated out. So that you don't have to put your, you know, arms to face inward while doing everything on a keyboard. And that makes how, sense to me. How are you going to make something like that and not have a can holder? 
See, now you're asking the real questions. It's. I mean, you can see he's got a drink in both pictures, and it's it's a problem, a big problem. You nudge that thing; that thing's falling over. You know, it's a lot easier to nudge a keyboard because you're gonna be typing. Yeah, you drop your pizza, you just got messy keys. You drop that soda, you need a new keyboard. I would love to have a dishwasher safe keyboard. I think they make those. Um, it's like a rollable plastic, disgusting keyboard. Like it probably feels like hell to type on, but it you can wash it. Trying to get a good picture of one because I found one. Gross. <laughs> I beat Lunar last week. It's done. Good work. Here's a, here's a keyboard being soaked. <laughs> this is how you clean it. Well, that's evidence right there. This music has all been from Freedom Planet. Got identified. Yeah, the cat is doing the same thing as the other one was doing. She is uh, trying to figure out why these boxes moved over. Can't believe. I miss my cat. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, had to, I, I gave her over to my older brother because I, I'm not allowed to have pets in this place. Oh, that sucks. That's a big problem. Uh, we're looking for a place and every single one of the nice houses says no pets. Ugh. Every single time that a place looks good and isn't a million dollars, it's no pets, no smoking. And you know, that ladder, I understand, but, uh, Cats ain't that destructive, jeez. Being completely honest, it's not actually that this place itself has a no pets rule, it's actually specifically that my landlord for this place only, and me the only person out of the entire building, is not allowed to have a pet with me. It annoys what? the shit out of me as well. I don't. That's... I couldn't tell you why. 
That sounds even worse. It is, yeah. We've been looking for a place, and um, some of the listings that have no pets on them have been up for months. And I, you know, we would have moved in there if it weren't for that. So those are fun to see. Yep. Fuck those guys. And their empty house. Oh. Oh, shit. Mm. I just realized I had uh, additional. I made additional plans at some at last. I do something on Friday that I only just now re uh, remembered. That I do it on Friday at 8 p.m. What's that? Uh, I just hang out with someone else or, uh, for something else, and I forgot that I do that. <laughs> um, I would like to see how these come out, though, so I could probably hold off a little bit longer. I don't know how to check for the meat being done. Like, I just check its temperature, usually. It's not like you're gonna overcook it. It's a braising thing, you know? It's not gonna go... It's really hard to overcook braised meats. You have to make it go a long time. Yeah, that's probably why she's put two or three hours. She just lets it in there. And as far as like the broccoli stuff being done, it's it is functionally already cooked. You're just waiting for the sauce to end up in the right texture and have a bit of browning on it, you know? Yeah. Once that uh, once it looks right, because it's got it's got a little golden brown, you're done. That's done. You're you're okay. It's not really a steak, Picky. It's that you can often get round in big, like, big super steaks is the thing, though. And you chop that up, and what you have is, uh, like, the chunks of what was a steak once. Oh, I mean, if you want to talk about having a steak that takes a while, uh, I am a giant proponent of the reverse sear when it comes to steak cooking. Steak... I, I actually prefer the reverse sear over sous vide, even. Like, just straight up. I, the, I think it comes out even better. I don't know nothing about meat. <laughs> what? So the it's reverse sear is... Um, for reverse sear, it's... You know, most of the time when you cook meat, you sear it first and then you cook it. Reverse sear is that you cook it at an extremely low temperature at first, and then right before you're done, you sear it instead. Uh, for steak, this is gets you the best of pretty much all worlds, because you have a perfectly medium-rare meat all the way through, uh, but you have a just freshly made crust on it. So it's it's nice and hot on the outside with a good steaming uh, like good uh good textured crust and everything while still being perfectly cooked all the way through and it even doesn't even have like the temperature gradient that uh other ways of cooking it do. do. And for reverse here for me I I cook it as low as possible 170 For how long? I have a thermometer that I check the temp with, is what it is. 
I if you don't have an instant read thermometer, I super super recommend you get one. You know, just any instant read thermometer that you know will work well. Uh, Thermopens will do just fine. For how long? It just depends on how thick the steak is. <laughs> instant read thermometer changed my life. Hey, listen, dog. It basically changed my life when it comes to cooking meat. I, I'm 100% there. I, I get them, you know? Well, we were looking to and obviously did not uh, do a triple feed cook and eat together virtual table thing yeah that was that was the original plan and i'm sorry that i didn't do that myself i i just ended up deciding since uh slow beef had to wasn't able to secure the time that i i don't want to do a one-on-one -on -one. i want it to be like a three-person thing and i fucked up and didn't actually make clear that i meant that i wasn't gonna do it so i I, I wanted to at least hang out for this because I, I felt bad. That was my bad. <laughs> I've been abandoned. That's all right. Um, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mean think to I, abandon uh, you. Didn't think this meat would hold all cut up as it was for uh, probably two or three days till we could possibly have organized another one. Yeah, that's fair. We can definitely organize a one, another one, though, and uh, I am 100% down. Yeah, I, I think that's going to happen at some point. Uh, it looks like we might be making a pizza at some point. I've done that on cast before. That's This one looks pretty easy. Uh, I had trouble with the dough. I always do before when I did it before. But it looks like it's a pan pizza. Pan pizzas are easy. Yeah, I haven't done that before. That looks way easier to deal with. I know when, I'm do th when I do this, I'm actually not going to use a cast iron pan because, uh, in my experience, this actually comes out better in a nonstick. <laughs> People don't tend to do that, but I, in my, I, I will. A nonstick that you can put in the oven specifically, though, because there are nonsticks that you can't. Yeah. Um, I'm up for desserts whenever I got a bunch of those. I gave you a list of the ones I've made. Yeah. I'm not very good at desserts that it, I'm just not a dessert guy, so I don't make them very often, but I, I would do one for sure. Generally speaking, my dessert uh, expertise kind of starts and ends at cookies. I mean, shit, the last time I made banana banana bread, it uh, I fucked up pretty bad. I fucked up that banana bread. It was a it was a banana brick. It was not very good. <laughs> I mean, it tasted fine, but the texture was all fucked up and wrong. It was after trying to make um, a cream cheesecake that I decided to uh, get a mixer, because that really sucked to do by hand. But once you have one, that ain't so bad. That's mostly all the work. Why do next have woods? Wait. I do have woods, next have woods, yeah. I've got a bunch of woods coming out of my neck, and I'm going to be honest. I don't know what's up with that. Who <laughs> needs that? Why do woods have necks, and why yeah. do rivers have mouths, you know? The belly of the sea.
25 minutes left by my reckoning on the meats. Uh, that's I think that's my minimum time that it could possibly not be done. YouTube has the advantage of forwarding time, but y'all don't. Yeah, it's true. You getting into the uh, fun cast this week? Sorry, what was that? Like, you doing, any... doing anything special? Yeah. I'm doing that marathon tomorrow. Do you want to talk about that, any? Uh, I mean, it's actually not, not really, because the, the one tomorrow, of course, I've been talking about it for a while. Uh, it's not an important one. The, the next one that I do is the important one. Don't undervalue your work. Hey, I'm not. It's just if you want to, <laughs> there's some good shit happening up on the next uh, on that other one. I I, tr I promise. I'm gonna be playing through some of or all of I don't know how much of Left Alive on that one, and that's gonna be great. Left Alive, the video game that uh, if you liked Front Mission, I'm sorry. Well, it was really boring and, and dreadful, but I finished Lunar DS. So, yep. <laughs> King Arthur and the Knights of Justice are next, and uh, Jordan is doing those. Um, I always forget his Twitch channel, but um, ranking with skeletons. Yeah, so I'll be over there watching that. Um, I think maybe that's starting next week. That's nice. <laughs> Lunar was way less painful than that's going to be. Like, I will never... <laughs> I'm definitely in that boat of believing that. Like, there's just no way that those two compare. Lunar Dragon Song, I'm aware, is a truly dreadful RPG, but also I do remember you doing a couple of bits and pieces of that, uh, <laughs> that, that King Arthur game. Especially that one boss fight. Holy shit. Yeah, so I was using safe states and it took me like two hours. Every time I died to him, it would be like a 10 minute walk. So there's a lot of time in, in that one. Learning that fight, it's going to be real nasty. Even if it looks like it's going well, that boss will show up and ruin what otherwise would be progress. The whole game is just such a nightmare. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, because it's also like, it's a it's a nightmare of finding flags, right? Like there's you have no way of knowing what you have to do next, sort of thing. They give you direction, but it's so awful. It took me. A, I, I've always done like, people can vote out a game, and I'll only play it until they vote it away. So that game has shown up a couple times before I knew how to play it, and I never made it past the first boss because. It's you have to do something. I think you have to grind points to level up to be able to fight back at all. You have to do something like that to even damage the boss. And I didn't see that <laughs> it's a mechanic that's it's not clear at all. I don't remember exactly what was going on, but the whole game is like that. So that will be a hell of a time. That will be a 50 well earned if that gets cleared. <laughs> That guy, he's the one. <laughs> yep, Snake Man screamed on MP3. I had it. Just uh, one really good scream over and over again. It's all he does. It's great. The plot of that is um, King Arthur and his knights uh, have already lost, and so 
Merlin did the next best thing and kidnapped a bunch of people from the 20th century off a football team, just a bunch of teenagers <laughs> to take their place. And uh, he gave them some power armor and they're doing their best, which isn't very good, but they're going to give it a shot. Maybe that's why the game is so hard. I mean, yeah, if you have to deal with King Arthur's threats when you're just a fucking football team, what are you going to do, right? You don't know how to use a sword. <laughs> what is, yeah, they're getting a lot of sword fights for a football team. Like, I, I get that there might be some kind of, like, the quarterback would know some tactics because he's used to organizing a small group of men, but, like, that's it. That's where the combat experience ends. That's it. Honestly, so honestly, they would actually be much better off if they all had horses. I'm pretty sure that, uh, like, charging around and charging into someone, the, the best example form of comparative and tactics that they could do there is if they immediately jumped into being cavalry. Which, hey, that's what knights are, so it makes sense on that front. But I don't no, think they ever got on any fucking horses, did they? <laughs> Uh, on the sh on the show they sure did, but in the game, no, <laughs> this never happens. It's it's kind of a it's hard to remember just how bad they get. There's like a teleport maze. I had a guide, and it took me a long it took me like eight hours. Um, but there's definitely a, like a warp maze and a bunch of other junk. I think. Um, I think I would be willing to give hints if it came down to impossible time with it. Merlin's kind of worthless. That's true in in Le Mort d'Arthur as well, for what it's worth. Motherfucker can only cast one spell and then he has to sleep for an entire year. Cool work, good wizard. His name's Merlin. Like, I you, that's like like James Bond. You get used to that name, so it doesn't sound so generic. But Merlin, what a nerdy ass name! Like <laughs> his name is Merlin. Yeah. Um, if you're pronouncing it in French, I guess it'd be Merlin. But still, yeah. Didn't he annoy some lady until she locked him up for all eternity in a tree or something, and that's how he died? <laughs> like, I think that's the end. I of Merlin. believe. I believe fucking with Morgan Le Fay is how he ends up getting fucked up, yeah. Like, he, she, she just didn't like him anymore, and she just locked him away. Like, he's just a really bad wizard. He's half demon, if I remember right, and also he aged backwards. So when he was, like, an old man, that was when he was a baby. This plot sucks. Merlin, when... <laughs> yeah, it... Merlin fucking sucks, is what I'm getting at, okay? Everyone who ever thought that Merlin was rad, I'm sorry. He, he fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm taking a look at that cheese. That's still all liquid. Yeah, it'll probably take a minute. Part of it is, too, is that uh, you cooked it in a taller dish than the, what they probably would have expected it to, so it's actually going to take a little bit longer for that reason as well. If I remember right. Yeah, it is an action game. Um, it's it's really like if you played like Lord of the Rings, the unbeatable game that that is. It's very similar, where you just have oh, some the yes and the yes, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, that game is misery. It sucks so much. Like I want to say that King Arthur's game is the worst one, but I know that that one also exists, and I haven't beaten that one. You have your boy Arthur, and then you can take your pick of the other two knights you bring with you. And I think you do need some of them at some point, like specifically some of them, but 
mostly they're exactly the same. <laughs> and you just you just kind of pick one to follow you around and get into fights with uh, the constant guys that are on the field. Lord of the Rings on the NES and SNES is, um, you walk out of Hobbit and, and you die to wolves. Yeah, that's that's as far as most people make it. Uh, I remember in the SNES version is that you can also walk over to the left of where you start and there is a sword on the floor. And there you pick that up and then you decide to go and leave and then you die immediately like you just said. You gotta go pick up that sword and then die. Yeah, the Horn of Gondor is in that game. We I, I used the cheat to unlock everything and that was there and it's um what it does is it stuns orcs for like three seconds and you can only use it three times and then it breaks, as the Horn of Gondor does. Back in the day when uh, my older brothers had ZSNES and just a whole bunch of SNES games on it, right? Uh, back in the olden days when ZSNES was getting actively updated and everything, uh, I kept on trying and failing over and over again to even want to play the Lord of the Rings game. Every time, just I would do that exact opening and then die and then be confused and not know what to do. I just could never commit. I probably should at one time. I, um, I, it sucks. <laughs> I don't know that you should. I mean, I know it sucks. That doesn't gonna stop me, per se. It's really bad. There's a cat spying on me while I cook. Cats do that. Handsome cat from the back. You haven't lived until your your cat has actually attacked you while you cook. Um, there's definitely a lot of information about Gondor, Lord of the Rings, and the Hobbit book, and all of that is absolutely the kind of story where you probably shouldn't look into those details because there's so many of them that it's just, it's it's obnoxiously like some things are just better left mysterious i think the more i know about gandalf the less i'm impressed with him yeah because oh shit gandalf is not only okay when he when he's just a wizard who does wizard stuff sure he does some stuff. I can respect that. He's a wizard, right? But then, like, you keep on learning more and more about, like, the, the history behind Gandalf. Now, Gandalf is apparently supposed to be this extremely powerful fucking angel, right? Like, he's yeah. an angel, basically. And they're like, wait, but that's all you can do as this enormously powerful angel? He can be given the ring of Satan, basically, and not know what it is for 200 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he can... He can swing a sword okay, I guess. He's not very good at it compared to other characters in the books either. And his magic doesn't really do much either, right? Like, he basically just lights rooms up sometimes. Yeah, he, he would be an okay wizard, but um, he's not a very good angel. Nah, it's true. I agree with you. Gandalf kind of sucks. You know what he can do, though? That's pretty impressive. Blowing smoke rings isn't the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. I respect that. There's definitely a lot of um, 
fluff. <laughs> it is, it, once you once you break out the summer and you really you really go into that's pure fluff. That's just like that's, an encyclopedia of fluff. Yeah, that's it's what it is is the history fucking textbook of a place that doesn't exist. Yeah. Really, it's, you, uh, it's a full very on. Dry. You can. It's extremely dry. You could run an entire semester of like school on that. Yeah, like the 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 history it includes things like the smog is actually one percent as big as this other dragon that that died no problem. <laughs> ah, of, of course, and Caligon the Black, the, the the dragon whose sky uh, wings blot out the sky because he's so big. But he died though. Like he just <laughs> he got fucked up. There's a little picture in the book of a little dude on a little tiny little airship flying towards him, and then underneath it it says, "Ah, oh, the self killed him." <laughs> yeah, some some idiot with a sword, just some elf. Some elf killed him describes like ninety percent of the characters in Silmarillion. It's basically just elven version of like Greek history. <laughs> like it's it's very similar in a lot of ways to yeah. those. Like, there's a guy who is... I don't remember the details, but... Um, Prometheus, I think, is the guy who gets his guts chewed out all the time, forever. Th that story is redone in there. Like, there's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the, um... Prometheus... Right, the Titan who gave the Secrets of Fire to humanity. And for punishment for doing that is... Yeah, he gets his guts eaten out. Forever. He's chained to a right. He's chained to a rock out in the middle of the ocean, and that's the only thing he has left for, uh, in his life. Well, you you learn Probably. about the first war, which you know again, it was better when it wasn't detailed, <laughs> because you learn that Sauron is just like the lackey of the actual bad guy, and the other gods just don't feel like solving this problem. Is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, Morgoth, I think, was the 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 big nasty man and yeah. Sauron was just the big nasty man's like lieutenant and so yeah so basically if you read the Silmarillion you basically just get like a 300 plus page story about actually why Sauron wasn't shit and how the, <laughs> the books uh and how uh Lord of the Rings is a the story there is not as impressive as it was when you first read it Uh, Morgoth and Melkor, I think both of those were his name. Yeah, like the, uh, the Balrogs were like the, the, or the orcs. <laughs> there, there was as many Balrogs as there are orcs in Lord of the Rings. Like, they're, they're everywhere. That, yeah. That's the scale of the war that happens, um, that I guess Gandalf forgot about because he didn't know about the ring. Like, this is, again, why he's a bad angel. <laughs> it was a hard book I, I to guess... read. <laughs> it's long. Sh I do not think the Silmarillion is an enjoyable read. I can I can just go ahead and say that to everyone right now. It, it wasn't. Honestly, the only book of J.K. Rowling, not J.K. Rowling, the other guy, J.R.R. Tolkien. There it is. Uh, they actually <laughs> enjoy reading is The Hobbit. That that is an insult to. J.R. Tolkien, and I apologize. Yeah, Hobbit was pretty good. Um, there's fluff in all of them. He definitely goes in uh, hyper detail. I don't mind it too much, but um, dudes like Bombadil show up, and it's it's a little weird. Uh, there's a whole Bombadil's scene, great though. There's a whole scene, and I think it's the uh, the two towers where Sam loses his magic rope trying to climb down a cliff, and it's like. It's paragraph after paragraph about how sad he is that he lost his rope. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about your rope, Sam. <laughs> like, can we get moving? Like, I like mo I, Sam, specifically, I like you a lot, For the, as far as all of the characters in these books go. You're pretty good. But Sam, you need to fucking shut up about this rope. We don't care. This magic rope that the elf lady gave him, and he's just so depressed about it. Like, he's in the middle of the desert dying, and this is what he's worried about. I yeah. mean, I like magic ropes. If I had a rope that could just do... I don't remember what was magic about it, but it was something neat. It was one of those things where like, huh, that's pretty handy. Does anyone know about the magic rope? What was what was good about it? 
I don't remember either. Well, Velerin, the reason why uh, he would be totally fine with saying Sam was the real protagonist of Lord of the Rings is because he based Sam off of his, uh, off of uh, one of his Batman buddies. Like, he was, like, one of his like, closest allies in World War II. Or World War I. I don't remember which World War it was, sorry. I believe it was World War I, actually. Um... Like he he based them directly off of a off of a war buddy is what it was, and one that he respected a lot. If the rope can untie itself, I don't know how Sam lost it. I forget. I just know that he was whining about it. That's all I remember. I just remember the complaining. That cheese is, uh, it's getting there. It's not quite there. The egg should even help it, uh, brown up a bit. <laughs> I just googled the words Merlin death and I got Merlin actually died three times in a row <laughs> he was stunned and beaten by shepherds and fell off a cliff and got impaled and then his head fell towards the water where he drowned <laughs> eat shit Merlin <laughs> get fucked Merlin <laughs> yeah <laughs> this Rasputin ass death nice yeah, Wizard Rasputin would be an entirely different uh, story. They had a story like that about Blackbeard, too. They were like his headless corpse swam around the boat seven times or something. <laughs> Some guys just get these badass death stories. Ever think about, like, um, not, what's his name? Lancelot is a piece of shit. Lancelot was a piece of shit. It's an important feature of Lancelot, in fact, that he was kind of awful. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, he, uh, he did a lot of getting furious and doing a bunch of murdering he shouldn't have done. Uh, and then one of the... One of the knights also is Lancelot's son, sometimes. I don't remember which one, though. Percival, maybe? It's like the the, the nicest, most uh, pure one, which I think is Percival. I'm glad they have a nice one. A friendly Galahad, one. Galahad, Galahad, that's right. Yeah. There's at least one nice one, yeah. The Knights of the Round Table in general were a eclectic mix of, of people that a lot of the lesser known ones were pretty interesting. Oh, when you said your your mom rented Excalibur, I thought you meant you found the sword somehow and you just had it as a kid, which was pretty neat. And I would, I, that'd be super neat. Yeah. This is less interesting. This reality, I believe. By the way, if anyone knows anyone who is uh, willing to part with a Type 19 longsword with a mildly complex uh, guard, I'd be interested in buying it. <laughs> I understand that this is an extremely long shot by asking in here, but I'm, you know, just throwing that out there. One of my viewers is 
leaning over their, their smith right now. I got one right here in my hand! Now, uh, type 19, uh, based off of Oakshot's type typology. Cheese. I think I'm gonna let that cool down. I hope that cheese isn't broken. Broken? Uh, cheese is inherently kind of a colloid of fat and uh, milk proteins, which uh, can mean that if it once it melts, it usually it, it has the possibility of breaking. Which causes the oil and the, uh, the the milk fats to separate. So you end up... So when you actually, like... That's how cheese can get oily, is basically what I mean. Um, I'm gonna check the temperature on the meat and see how it looks. You're thinking I should remove the foil and cook it without it for a while? I think so, yeah. I should let it char up a little bit. That That's flavor, you know? Yeah. How long do you think I should do that? Uh, what is it actually temperature at? 200. <laughs> it's pretty high. 200 Celsius? Yeah, no, oh, no, Fahrenheit. Wait, no, seriously? 200 degrees Fahrenheit? That's all that's cooked at? Yeah. Really? That piece of meat was, yeah. Oh, you mean the meat is 200. Okay, no, sorry. I meant what What temperature are you cooking at? Sorry. No, <laughs> three, uh, 350. Okay, yeah. Um, if you're gonna cook something at 350 to try and get some charring on, it's probably gonna take like 25 minutes or so. 20, 25. Uh, oh. at the same time, if your meat's at, uh, at 200, <laughs> it's already, it, you know, it's obviously done as far as wanting to cook it, but if it has to be at just the right te uh, texture that you're looking for. Yeah, it's, uh, it's where I would call it, uh, normally. Oh, really? Well, I mean, yeah. if you're good to go, then you're good to go. You don't have to get the charring on it. Let me, uh, let me put it up here. There it is. The meat. I mean, hey, yeah, that looks like meat to me. Yeah. It's supposed to be very, very easy. Yeah, it is <laughs> very easy to cut through, yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff, yeah. It's very soft and uh, delicious meat. When you can slice it with a fork without any effort at all, that's when it's done. Well, that's our uh, that's our cooking today. I was I was thinking about making a third dish, but I'm like, that's that's way too much for <laughs> like we ain't gonna we ain't gonna be able to do it. It's also kind of hard to when you get down to it, cheesy broccoli and 
braised beef together, that's two heavy pe foods at the same time, you know? Yeah. The other side that you go with this would probably be like, I don't know, like a salad, you know? <laughs> yeah, she was looking at garlic potatoes. I'm like, mm. <laughs> that's, that's, that's another so, heavy bit. It's just too much. This is enough food to last us the rest of the week. We'll be eating the steak forever. Um, yeah, steak and barbecue sauce. I would recommend it. Um, this recipe, anyway. I don't know a lot about steak, but um, like I was saying earlier, this is my mom's, like, oh, we got family coming in over for Christmas. Let's do this. This is her meal for that, you know, that meal that every family usually has. This is the good stuff. Well, it looks good to me. I think I'm done. Uh, thanks for joining me, Doc. Yep, no worries. Uh, again, next time we actually do one of these and, like, you know, we are all on board, I'm 100% down to doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely for that, whatever we're cooking. I, I um, might not be familiar with it all, but I'm certainly familiar with pizza if we're doing that. Uh, I yeah. just need no win. And since it's dinner, Maybe... no, I can schedule that any time. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and... I mean, hey, maybe I'll throw up a recipe to do for us to do one time, and that'll be hard mode. Yeah. This is most disturbing. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I'll see ya. Uh, have a good one. Thanks. See you later. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me. Hope my mic quality was good uh, enough. I'm going to listen to it. Let's look at the fun. I like these... Um, these pods are right, but uh, they're not necessarily meant for broadcasting. As in to say, they certainly are not. But um, if they, if it's really low, if I don't like it, I can get a mic to work with them. That's no problem. I just didn't have one. It seems like people can understand what I'm saying. So that's a step. Let's see who's online here. I'm gonna host off of blues. Message of barbecue steak. No context. <laughs> See you later. Have a good one, everybody. This is the end of time for me. I might be on later, but it would be hours later. Have a good one.